You're listening to Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Hello and welcome to episode 67 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Nick. That was so fucking tight. What was it? It was Shadow's theme from Final Fantasy VI. Fuck yeah. Who was playing it? A YouTube player? Nope. <laughs> it was played live by Nick Jones. Oh man. Where are we recording at right now? <laughs> On some fucking steep ass mountain. <laughs> Tallest mountain. <laughs> Yeah, felt like Dora the Explorer getting here. <laughs> Where are we going? Yeah, that shit was rough for me. <laughs> but we made it up. No biggie. You just have to believe. That's that's what I did. <laughs> I machka'd the mountain. <laughs> What's machka mean? Crush. Uh, <laughs> I think the mountain took a few blows on you too. Who's standing here now? <laughs> Alive, me. <laughs> It's like a nice up here. It is. It's beautiful. It's supposed to be like 90 in sack right now. Sitting here in the shade. Yeah. On a big old pile of huge rocks. It's awesome. This is where Nick first proclaimed his love to Melissa. That's right. I didn't quite score that night, but... Why don't we talk about the huge elephant in the room? What's that? We have an audience. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, we have Eddie, Brian, and the two Matt, Matty G., Who's like, ugh. <laughs> like, this hike was so easy for me to get up here. <laughs> I carried your guys' water, and I'll be your guide. Yeah, he navigated well. I have to give him props. He even squatted down, like, halfway here and, like, okay, we'll take this route left, and then we'll go up the mountain. And he even helped Brian get up here, too. <laughs> Brian would never admit to that. <laughs> Quote time. Uh, oh, my bad. That's me. See if you can get this one. Oh my gosh! The bear, Miss Chocolate, has left me her poop. It's her crap. It was just in her butt and it's still warm. This is a gift from Miss Chocolate. I have no idea. <laughs> is that on Dora the Explorer? Nope. <laughs> What's it from? Grizzly Man. <laughs> you never saw Grizzly Man? No. <laughs> Did you see Grizzly Man? No one's seen. Have you guys seen Grizzly Man? Is that the guy that got mauled by bears? Yeah, <laughs> Brian just pointed out that at the end, it's a documentary about this guy who goes in. Oh, like, okay. The woods I heard he, of that. He like tries to make friends with bears, and at the end of the documentary, of course, he gets killed by a bear. Oh. <laughs> Is it a mockumentary? No, it's, it's real. real life? It's real. Do they show it? No, they oh. they say they have an audio recording of it, but his friend won't let anyone here that sucks <laughs> i'm sorry i thought i thought you guys had seen that no that was a good one though i'm sure a few members of our audience got that yeah he, he has a very i don't know have you, you know those those commercials for chris lee knows best yeah <laughs> that's what yeah, it, that's what he sounds true. like i've never watched that show but they always show those commercials on uh, what Duck dynasty Raw. no chris, chris lee knows, knows best. best what's that you probably don't see him because you watch it on hulu uh -huh. on usa they have this, this show called chris lee knows best where it's like to me, he seems gay, but I guess yeah. he's not gay because he has a family. I don't yeah. know. Maybe. Is he on Raw? He's, he, they they no. just play commercials for the oh, show. It's okay. a show. Oh, okay. Bad. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's what he sounds like. I think, he's gay. I think he is, too. He's probably just, you know, one of those sad individuals who can't admit it. He's got a beard. <laughs> His wife. I guess so. <laughs> so you get this treasure hunting out of the way? Sure do. I don't even think it's worth mentioning how much mine is worth because I know I'm getting blown out of the water, but you get to steal one of them. You want me to go first? No, I'll go first. All I'll right. get the anticlimactic stuff out of the way. <laughs> SNES cartridge. From Dimple. Jurassic Park Part <laughs> 2. The chaos continues. <laughs> That's awesome. It's worth 13 bucks right there. Awesome. 
That's the rarer of the two, of the two Jurassic Parks. Okay. And then this one. Oh, Sega Genesis, 99 cents. Did you do a dimple switch around? Oh, shit, NHL I see what it is. 94. Nice. Is this worth money? Uh, six bucks. Wow. Why is this one? Well, I guess it's the best one, That's huh? the legendary version. That's what Kevin Smith wanted to have in Mall Rats, but couldn't. It was too good. All right. I've got a shit ton of treasure. I went on a bike ride last weekend, and the first day I uh, ran across this family. Um, and they were having a moving cell. So I, they had a bunch of stuff. I said, you got any video games? They said, yeah, yeah, we have video games. They told their kid to go get the games. It was a huge box of PlayStation 3 games. So then the this other guy behind me was like, I want to see the games. And the guy's like, well, this guy said he got it first. So nice. I tried to look through it without using price trading and pull the best out of the best out of the lot. So here's my first one. Fear. How much is that worth? <laughs> uh, eleven dollars. Cool. Made by Sierra. I think they make like King's Quest and stuff like that for the PC. Oh, Grand Theft Auto 4. Liberty City episode. Oh, it's a complete edition. That's heck yeah. tight. How much? 25. Okay. Oh. Sonic Genesis collection. That's hella tight. Doesn't that one have Shining Force on it? It says Altered Beast? Yeah. I heck I want to borrow this. <laughs> you could play it at the cabin. That's hella tight. Oh, that's true. Nice. Good call. Fantasy Star. What? Vector Man 2. Echo. That's stupid. <laughs> Echo, isn't that that dolphin game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kid Chameleon. Fantasy Star 4. Oh, damn. Yeah, I was thinking about keeping it, but... How much is it worth? It's only worth 12. For 12? Why don't you just Yeah, it? fuck that. I'll buy it off you for 12. Dead Rising 2. This is the one where you get a duct tape chainsaw yeah, to a... Yeah, I've a, got it, an but... Or, a hate, canoe I, or... I don't like it, I so. saw... See, you could... You got chainsaws on a or. <laughs> That's 10. Capcom. Fallout New Vegas. I thought that would have been worth more, but... It was only worth, uh... 8 bucks. Seems right. Infamous 2. The, is this the one with Alan Cole? Uh, Cole is in both of them. That's worth uh, ten. Damn! Oh, PlayStation All Stars. Complete twelve. That's hecka tight. Jack and Dexter Collection HD. Damn, you got, got hella shit. Uh, that is worth. Oh, I didn't put it on here. Ten to twelve, I think. So, guess how much I paid for all that? $26. $26. The kid wanted uh, 50 and I said, uh, can you do 15 <laughs> He went below half. Because the dad was away, so I figured oh, okay. I'd try to swindle him. You should have been like, look at this money here and wave I, it in his face. So then uh, he was like, uh, 30 I was like, how about 25 He's like, 26 I was like, oh, I'll do 26 <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to wait for his dad to give me $14 change. <laughs> <laughs> now the next, then after that, I went on another bike ride to the other side of my, uh, my neighborhood. <sighs> this is where I gained like 10 levels in bargaining. Do you know what this is? It's a CD case, it looks like, or a CD player. Games. All those are games? All these are games. The guy wanted $3 per game. So yeah. I was like, uh, will you do 20 for them all? And he's like, no. I was like, well, I only see two or three that I want in here. Uh, and then the rest I was going to give to my son. So I, I'll just take those two for $6. He's like, 50 I was like, 30 <laughs> And then he said forty. I was like, "All right, I'll do 40. So we went from ninety to four to forty. Wow. Here's the prices. Uh, Is that what they're worth? Yeah. So three extreme, two fifty. Frogger, four dollars. 
Hot Shots Golf 3. Yeah. $3. King Kong Peter Jackson, $4. Grand Theft Auto 3, $2.50. Knockout Kings, $2,000 for $3. Lord of the Rings Return of the King, $4. Lord of the Rings Two Towers, $2.00. Music Maker, $4. Lord of the Rings, The Third Age, $5. <clears throat> L.A. Rush, $5. Spy Hunter, $2. Mortal Kombat Deception, $4. Oh, Men in Black 2. Men in Black 2. <laughs> Alien Escape, $3. Kingdom Ooh. Hearts, $5. Very nice. SSX, Maddie G's favorite. <laughs> One dollar. Uh, NASCAR Thunder, two thousand four dollars. WCW versus the World, three dollars. Oh, Big Game Hunter, four dollars. Star Wars Two Starfighter, three dollars. Twisted Metal Black, three dollars. Uh, Corvette, some stupid racing game, three dollars. <laughs> Guitar Hero two dollars, Prince of Persia Sands of Time three three fifty, uh, Prince of Persia Warrior Within three fifty. Getting to the good stuff now. Ooh, I saw a sixteen dollar price tag. American Chopper five dollars. Time, Time Crisis, Crisis three five dollars. Harry Potter four dollars. Pikmin oh shit. sixteen. Kingdom Hearts two nine. Yes. Link crossbow training four dollars. Another Lord of the Ring two towers. Oh. Luigi's mansion twenty two. Loose. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, action replay max eight dollars. Uh, Viva pinata for the uh, game box three sixty seven bucks. <laughs> Beat box. <laughs> yeah. And I think oh Star Fox Assault twenty dollars. Fright Night Round 2, $4. And I think that's it. You should have put all oh. the good ones in the back. Uh, Day of Reckoning, $6. That God of War is just a single disc. I can't sell it by itself. But that's it. Cool. Grand total of $196. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so you could steal one of my treasures, Not but I don't think it would make a difference. Nah. I mean, you have I mean, to. Uh, I'll steal... No, we have to do it randomly. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the dice rolling app right here. Uh, even, even is Super Nintendo, odd is Sega Genesis, even Super Nintendo. You didn't even look. <laughs> <laughs> right, give me those, I'll put them in here. So my, finally my steal of treasure is gone, but hopefully I don't have to take a bad punishment. Okay, so we added a couple things to the punishment. Instead of the ass punch, it's going to be called Shuriken. <laughs> and you have to make that noise when you do the ass punch. <laughs> and then uh, we also have the Hadouken. That's when you do the top and the bottom and you go for the ass and balls at the same time. <laughs> courtesy of Tim Wilson. So you have your uh, dice roller app. Punishment first. Nine. Death punch times five. Eight. Ass punch. <laughs> I'm going to have to go for the ass punch. <laughs> and then your prize. I thought it was called the Shuriken. Oh, oh, sorry. Shuriken. <laughs> it's not a Hadouken? No, the Hadouken's a different one. Uh, your, your prize. Steal random treasure. <laughs> or a Hadouken. Uh, Steal random treasure. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Let's get this Shuriken out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> oh, fuck. Right out on it. <laughs> ready? Yeah. Shuriken. Oh! <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> because what happens is when we bring we compete every week on our podcast whoever oh. brings the least amount of treasure to sell 
gets a punishment because that was a punishment. <laughs> Oh, that fucking sucked. <laughs> that, that didn't hurt as bad as last time, but it's still. Oh, I can't even sit on this shit anymore. <laughs> so last night we were fortunate enough to get into a sold out mini boss show based on this. Or because of Nick swindling, <laughs> but he didn't. Really, he didn't really swindle. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to say how I did it because I don't want other people to get the idea. <laughs> but regardless of his tactics, we got into the show on but, the guest list. It was, just, not, it was not dirty tactics. It oh, was not. Let's just make that clear. It was clean, sexy fun. <laughs> but we uh, met up with the uh, one of the guitarists named Aaron, and we got to interview him. Uh, and we were like, hey, we do a podcast, Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia, you know, can we ask you a few questions? He's like, oh, totally, go for it. So I asked him what his favorite mini boss and boss was. And his answer was, Birdo was his favorite mini boss, which makes sense. <laughs> he, and then he said if Craig and Ridley could count as mini bosses, he would say them as well. I would count them as mini bosses. I wouldn't, not on Super Metroid. No, 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 on regular Metroid I would, because they're just larger enemies. So... And then his favorite bosses, he said, was, uh, oh, no, his most, did you ask him his most hated boss? He, he said. He just brought it up himself. Yeah. Uh, was the Grim Reaper from Castlevania. The, the stage five boss. Yeah. We then asked him what his favorite game was music-wise. He said he liked Metroid, Zelda, uh, kind of the stock answer. but Super Mario 2. Yeah, he, the, 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 the band played a 30-minute set. And two of the pieces of music that they played were uh, a Super Mario Brothers 2 medley and a Kid Icarus medley. And each of those songs were like at least 10 minutes long. Yeah, and the... Kid Icarus was closer to 12 minutes long. And he did say Kid Icarus. He did. Too. He actually said, you know, those are two of his favorites in terms of video game music. I'm surprised he didn't say Mega Man 2 because they have a Mega Man 2 medley that's off the hook. I was, I was thinking the same thing, yeah. Maybe they just play it so much or they got tired of it. Because <laughs> those guys were changing the themes. Like, during the Mega Man 2 theme, they played a bunch of different songs. Like, Bubble Man stage, Flash Man stage. It was seamless the way they changed uh, through each song. Like, they didn't stop or anything. Yeah, that was cool. They got their music down pat. Anything else on the mini bosses besides they were hecka better than Jimmy Eat World? <laughs> I thought it was cool that one of the members of uh, Mini Bosses was actually in Jimmy Eat World as well. Yeah, I didn't know that. I, I wish I'd known his name. Of it. I would give him some props, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, <clears throat> he played in both bands, and it's not like it didn't look like he was just filling in for one or the other. He was actually a member of each of those bands. Yeah, touring together it was really cool. That's right. I thought Jimmy Eat World was pretty good. If if I if we did not have plans to come up to the cabin, then I would have stayed for pain. Yeah. I would have liked to have stayed through the whole thing. I. Go ahead. I was just going to say, the Jimmy Eat World is touring right now because it's their 10-year anniversary of their album, Futures. I do not have a single Jimmy Eat World album, but I do like their music, what music I've heard. Uh, the first few songs that we listened to while we were there, I really enjoyed. So Yeah. I made makeshift earplugs because I saw Nick put his earplugs in, and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so I ripped up a piece of paper and stuck them in my ears, <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> Yeah, the girls were hecka getting into it, too. They were getting hecka soaked and yeah, wet. Yeah, they were. That girl in front of me kept on bumping into me. Oh, man, she wanted you to grind on her. I know she did, but I couldn't do it. I'm a committed man. You should have said, I'm married, and showed her your, ring, your wedding finger. <laughs> you know, she, she would have stuck her mouth on his finger and sucked the ring off. <laughs> so it's good you didn't do that. Uh, so go ahead and like us on Facebook. Uh, be Be active. We want you guys to let us know how we're doing. Uh, we've got 72 likes. Let's go ahead and strive for 100 for the next couple months. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. I just played through Mega Man 2. And, um, yeah, the, the first eight bosses are on the first video. It's Torment versus Mega Man 2, part one and part two. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, I commentate live. I don't like doing it, playing through first and then um, dubbing over it. I like doing it live because I think it keeps the audience more engaged. It feels more real. And you guys get to hear about my ball tension. 
<laughs> if that's all you guys watch for, just watch for that. Then you guys will know what the ball tension is. <laughs> uh, but be active on Instagram. Follow us there and at Twitter at NES Hunter. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go into top five NES <laughs> games, or top five list. <laughs> top five. Top five <laughs> NES games that have forests in them or wood <sighs> stages. They don't have, even have to be full stages. I mean, just like... As long as you see a forest, you're golden. Even if it's like one tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I limited it to like an actual forest setting. So let's go ahead and roll to see who gets to go first. Uh, Brandon gets ten... I get 10, Nick gets 9, Brandon gets 2, I get 8, so I guess I'll be starting. Number 5 on my list is going to have to be Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. After Link's find the power gloves, he could ca cut down acres of wood with one almighty chop. In one case, you can even find a hidden town hiding underneath the woods. I'm going to attempt to play something for you. There's a good chance I'll fuck it up, though. Bloody Tears. Fuck yeah. A very shitty version of Bloody Tears. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Shitty> number... <laughs> shitty Tears. Nice. I think Thank we have you. the name of our episode. <laughs> Are we allowed to put Shitty Tears? Why not? Right. <laughs> That's number five on my li list is uh, Castlevania II Simon's Quest. Had to be on my list. During the day, even though the monsters are a tad weaker, Simon Belmont is roaming through the forest while Bloody Tears plays. One of the greatest pieces of music in video game history. Then at night, the monsters are at full strength, and a nice piece of music by the name of Monster Dance plays. That's my number five. It's Is Castlevania that? Number five on my list stars the main character named Nathan Rad Spencer. Totally rad? Bionic Commando. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The main character underwent surgery to replace his arm with something more futuristic. Do you know why Nathan underwent surgery to replace his arm with a bionic one? To save the president? Fact. <laughs> <laughs> he had an immunodeficiency disease that <laughs> deteriorated 89.6% of his abdominal, calf, and leg muscles, along with 97.3% I was Gluteus Maximus. Oh, that's why I can't jump in the game. Do you know why these muscles are prominently used for jumping? Oh, shit. His surgeon, Maximilian von Strutenberg, advised that if he ever jumped again, he would die. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in the instruction booklet or something? Or how do they know that? I just made that up. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> fan, fan from last year. Yeah. <laughs> that was legit. Yeah. Number four on my list is going to have to be a game that I just beat recently and I can't believe I beat it, Ghost and Goblins. Level 1-2 takes place in the forest where you fight the unicorn and condom ghosts. <laughs> and they sound like... <laughs> the, the, I, I was actually trying to do a video recording of this last week, but the game is so fast, I can't get words in that, you know, I have to stay in one spot and talk and I don't want to because you could die. You could pause. Yeah. That's a humble brag. <laughs> you know, you're just like, oh, yeah, it's too easy. I just get through it heck of fast now, so I don't have time to talk. Well, the levels are really short. You could beat them in, like, 90 seconds. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but the, in the fourth level, the condom, the condom goes fly around, and I said, <laughs> those make noises like if you blow up a condom balloon and let it out heck of easy, like, ee! That's what they sound like. And there's even the condom ghosts that are holding items, yeah. and those are ribbed for her pleasure. <laughs> I had that in there. I thought it was pretty cool, but... Unicorn, I don't know how that thing's a unicorn. Yeah, remember what the unicorns look like? Yeah. Big they're, giant ogres guess, with a little horn oh, on their yeah, head. Oh, yeah, those guys, yeah. They're, they're called unicorns. <laughs> so that was my number ogres. four. You you beat that game because I challenged you to beat it. That's right. It you, was You gained $10 from that. Yeah, it was because of you that I actually played through and beat I'm it. I'm wondering what, what value you put on 
de- de- defeating a uh, difficult game. Thinking about offering you five dollars to beat Kid Icarus. That's a difficult game. I could probably do that. I I thought you were gonna say Battle Toads. I no <laughs> way I could beat Battle Toads. I'll try Kid Icarus. I'm glad Nick challenged me because otherwise I wouldn't have bothered playing through it. So now it's Kid Icarus. Yep. Kid Icarus is cool. That's a fun game. Great music. It was yeah. It, it does have a lot of great music. It was just a shame listening to the mini bosses play that medley last night, and I like knew two of the songs. Because I never got far enough in the game to hear the rest of the music. Did you hear the Reaper, the Reaper part? Yeah, that was tight. Yeah, that was hecka tight. I, I think you should video record it, even though you don't know what you're doing. Blind record's always fun to watch on YouTube. And what, just do it like half hour at a time? It's possible. I might do that. It'd be funny to get you like your legit reaction exactly. when you're like fucking up. Okay, I could do that. <laughs> I think it'd be funny. Yeah, during that the, the Grim Reaper part that you were talking about, I, I felt like the crowd like getting kind of uncomfortable because it is an uncomfortable piece. It's it's only like it's like a two second piece of music that like loops over yeah. and over, and it's very dissonant sounding. It's, I could feel the crowd being like, "Oh man, these this, these guys are terrible," but really they're playing it exactly the way yeah. it's supposed to be played. Yeah. Uh, my number four is Little Nemo, the Dream Master. Uh, another game with a lot of great music, made by Capcom. So you know it's gonna it's gonna be a good quality game. Uh, one of the levels is called the Mushroom Forest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nemo can feed animals candy to take the form of a frog, a mole, and a lizard. Heck, a tight game. The Thank lizard, Brandon's it. favorite animal that's not an owl, <laughs> cat, or what was the other bat. A bat. Yeah, yeah, but that was the best out of the two that was provided to me. You still won the game. Shut up. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you know it must be slain? Dragons? The Dragon Lord. <laughs> and it's up to you to do it because he stole the balls of light. In this free roaming game, the only place you cannot initially go is the Dragon Lord's castle, and that's Dragon Warrior. What's stopping you from going to a different part of the map? Say, you start out and you're like, well, I could almost go to the end of the uh, game. Let's just walk over there. What's stopping you? Ravens? Werewolves. Star Waverns, werewolves, all in the forest, wizards, rogue scorpions, demon knights, and there's a ton of forest scenery throughout the game. Uh, the hero's name has an effect on his initial ability score, so like, whatever you name your hero, your name comes into play how powerful he is. Really? Yeah, there's a whole <clears throat> calculation for each letter in each set of the name. So people have tested it, and they found out that in order to get the maximum points possible for leveling up, do you know what your name has to be? What? Test. Test? And you know what? To get the least amount of points uh, to level up at, the next. Really? Next, yeah. The people who made the game? Yeah. <laughs> We're on number three. three been mentioned before, Castlevania Two: Simon's Quest. In the forest, you actually find the sacred flame. That's one of my favorite sub weapons. <laughs> <laughs> What's the sacred flame? It's a little flame thing that when you throw it, it's a pillar of flame. You find it in a, a breakable wall down in the forest. Huh. I just the played through that game kind of. mm-hmm. like a f- few weeks ago, and I don't remember finding that. That's weird. Uh, my number three is Zelda II: The Adventures of Link, another game that's also already been mentioned. There's forested areas all over the map on Zelda II, and many secrets lie within the forest, as Brad had mentioned. Uh, if you get caught by a monster while wandering the forest, you got to deal with some bastard enemies, though. There's these spiders called dealers that descend from the trees, and the blue ones even get onto the ground and they jump and try to catch Link. There's also these moblins that wander around the forest with spears, and those guys are bastards. <laughs> So that's my number three is uh, Adventures of Link. So my number three is Iron Sword Wizards and Warriors 2. I actually forgot all about that game. That game's hella tight. Yeah, I was just thinking about games on uh, with foresty levels, and this game came to mind. <clears throat> it is extremely fun, uh, it, although really difficult, because your hitbox in order to hit enemies is so small, you end up getting hit first, and you can't swing your sword. You just have to jump and pray you hit your enemy. So uh, it uh, consists of four levels called domains uh, with the four elementals, fire, earth, air, and water. And each of the, these domains have a, something called an animal king, which you must return a gold item to them. 
and the second level is the animal king of a frog, and you have to bring him his crown. <laughs> uh, once you ascend, and after you beat each domain, you get a piece of the iron sword, sword, and that then you have to scale. Do you remember the mountain's name? The final mountain. Ice Fire Mountain. <laughs> Ice Fire Mountain. <laughs> Brad and I can never beat Ice Fire Mountain, so I want to play that uh, on the video recorder and get my initial reactions and fails and try to beat that game. We have that here, right? Yeah. Oh, that's tight. I always love playing Witches and Warriors. I don't think I've ever played that. That's cool. Yeah, it's awesome. I look forward Very to Very frustrating, it. but it, you get a, get gold and go into shops throughout uh, the levels. It's cool. <laughs> level three is a fire level and the boss is like this you have to fight a lava pit yeah that you have to shoot uh magic cert- magic into its mouth sucks and then if on level four if you get the axe or a club then you like lose your sword through the whole game you don't get to play with the iron sword so my <laughs> <laughs> little brothers yeah brian is throwing rocks at matt that's not true oh never mind Matt's just making it up. <laughs> uh, my number two is going to have to be Friday the 13th. You fight the famous Jason Voorhees with rocks, daggers, axes, torches, machetes, and pitchforks. But you start off with a rock. And if you could get past the first couple levels of that game, Jason's heck of easy to kill. But he just comes up and slaughters you. He kills the little kids in the cabins. He kills other counselors. He's just a menace, and I find it very disturbing now, looking back, that he'll actually go in the middle of the lake and start killing the kids, and you'll see their little faces diminish, like they're dying. So that's pretty crazy. It's my number two. My number two is a game that Brad just put on YouTube, Mega Man 2. Mega Man has to traverse through a forest inhabited inhabited by some robotic wildlife in Woodman Stage. Some of the enemies that Mega Man has to face are robot bats called Battens or Batons, referred to Brad as Obama. <laughs> Why are they called Obama? Because they have fierce looking eyes, right. like Not Obama. Black. Not because they're black. <laughs> There's also mechanical hares called Robots and atomic chickens called Cooks. So that's my number two. Or number two is uh, Mega Man 2 Woodman stage. My number two is Friday the 13th as well. I thought Nick was going to say, my number two is something Brad just talked about. <laughs> that would have been pretty funny. But uh, <clears throat> not much more you could add. You get to fight Jason's mom in the forest. It's just her head floating around. And uh, if you get like a powerful weapon like the torch or the axe or something, you could end up getting a knife for Chekka Sucks or even the rock. So you got to be careful on what items you pick Cause up. Because the items appear out of nowhere. Yeah. My number one is something that Nick just talked about, Mega Man 2. There's these black bats that look like Obama (laughs) because they have fierce eyes like he mentioned. During my playthrough, you can find on YouTube, my life was drained heavily and I was in desperate need of health care. (laughs) I approached two Obama bats and hit them with the metal blade and they each dropped a giant health. So, Obama gave me health care in the video game and in real life. <laughs> Did you know those bats in Mega Man X uh, are the most common to, to drop, drop one-ups? Yeah. 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 I actually got a one-up in the playthrough as well. Yeah, you did. And I mentioned that. I was like, ACA, Affordable <laughs> Care Act, Obamacare. That was my number one, Mega Man 2. The whole Woodman level, the reference with uh, our Uncle Russell being aliased on sacksheriff.com as Woodman. <laughs> Remember we asked mom why he was named Woodman. And she wouldn't say. Yeah, she did. She said because he was tough and strong. Oh. <laughs> that sounds like bullshit. <laughs> she was like, it's because of his dick. Oh, gross. <laughs> um, what is the uh, the Mega's version of the Woodman's stage? What is, what is it about? Uh, it has... They talk about having robotic ostriches, bats, and big monkeys, and he's built from mighty oak. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't, like, have a crush on him or anything like that? No, that's Flashman. <laughs> I was just wondering if he had any sort of, like, unique feelings towards Mega Man, but it doesn't sound like it. No, he, he's uh, built from mighty oak and uh, parts of war, so... He's pretty tough. Parts of nice. war? Yeah. <laughs> That's like a tight. How do you get <laughs> items of war and just build something from it? 
dead babies. <laughs> <laughs> My number one is the original Legend of Zelda. Four words for you. North, west, south, west. That is the key to getting through the forest maze. So Link can get to the graveyard and get the what sword? The magic sword. <laughs> right. This game has to be number one on any number of top five lists, and I just couldn't disrespect the game by putting it anywhere else on my list, so it's my number one. My number one uh, has been mentioned before, and it was Castlevania II, Simon's Quest. Uh, it just features a, uh, the greatest forest of them all and has a the best music in there. We were talked about it, so there's not much more to say about it. Honorable mentions? Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy is a good one. Dragon Warrior. I like that one a lot. I have Contra, Legend of Zelda 1 and 2, Double Dragon 2, The Revenge, had the forest level. DuckTales. The Amazon. Uh, That's and, more of a jungle, I guess. But. And then Ghosts and Goblins. So, cool picks, cool picks. Yes! Alright, so I'm going to get the obvious ones out of the way here. Uh, Bills and Lions. I'm going with the Lions because Bills is a New York team. Bears and Panthers, going with the Panthers because Brad's cousin Jeffrey really likes the Bears and he's stupid, so. <laughs> he's not really my cousin. He's cousin by marriage. <laughs> Falcons and Giants. Uh, Falcons because the Giants are a New York team. Steelers and the Jaguars. Ste uh, Jaguars. Ja <laughs> Jaguars because the uh, Steelers. <laughs> Jeremiah likes the Steelers. <laughs> Jets and Chargers. They, I almost kind of was iffy on this one because the Jets are a New York team, but the Chargers, Joe Covervius turned his back on the 49ers <laughs> and went with the Chargers. So I was thinking about that, but I was like, no, nah, I got to go with Chargers. Texans and Cowboys, Cowboys. Yes. Uh, Bucks and Saints, got to go with the Saints. Rams and Eagles, Eagles. Seahawks and Redskins, Seahawks because of the weather in Seattle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, here's where I had to do my analysis. Uh, Bengals and Patriots. Uh, who do you, Does anyone know anyone famous born in Cincinnati? The most famous person that I could find mainstream was Carmen Electra. Ugh. Now, I couldn't find a physical place called New England, but the stadium... <laughs> <laughs> the stadium that the Patriots play in is located in Foxborough, Massachusetts. And the only person I could find born there that's famous was a singer named JoJo. So it's going to be the Bengals. <laughs> Upset of the week. Okay. Ravens and the Colts. We have our first suspected celebrity listener here. You guys ever hear of Lee Ron Landry? Landry? Leron Landary. <laughs> no. He's a player for the Colts. Oh, okay. He heard my description from the previous episode of a Colt, and he thought, after hearing all this Colt talk, my team better not be picked to lose. So he threw out all his Rolling Stone albums and started taking PTSDs. So just for that, it's Colts. PTSD. PTSDs? The steroids. Oh. What are you talking about? You mean PEDs, performance enhancing <laughs> drugs? Yeah. Post-traumatic <laughs> stress disorders. Yeah. Oh, he's okay. taking that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Vikings and Green Bay. <laughs> Two Blizzard teams. <laughs> play. Yeah. Uh, so, which famous person do you know is a fan of the Vikings? Going to the Viking fans. Anyone? Warren Moon? No. Isn't um, Jesse Ventura from Minnesota? He's from Minnesota. He's probably a Vikings fan, I would guess. Maybe. So the closest thing to a celeb that I could find who likes a Viking was a guy named Al Franklin. Or Franklin. <laughs> the way I see it, he his name's Al Franken. It's a Jew down version of Frankenstein. <laughs> so... But don't you think he would have gotten further along in life if his name was Al Frankenstein? <laughs> He's like, uh, I don't want to have the same name as a man who created a monster. That's dorky. That's nerdy. I don't want to be associated with type D personalities. Well, guess what, Al Franken? 
I would have loved to be named after one of the greatest scientists known to man. <laughs> Einstein, get out of here. He took credit for making the atomic bomb, but he really didn't. He wanted the blood of countless ninja and samurai on his hands. <laughs> All he did was make Churchill aware of the Nazis, uh, that the Nazis were close to making the bomb so that it would expedite the Allies' uh, version of the weapon. <clears throat> Tesla... Granted, he's pretty cool for Dude. being in Castlevania yeah. Lords of Shadow. Don't diss Tesla. I'm not going to diss now. Tesla, but what I am going to diss is a faggy car that takes his namesake. Oh, come on. <laughs> Those cars are tight. Are they electric? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Franken even became senator of Minnesota. Who does this guy think he is? Jesse Ventura? <laughs> this guy's retarded. And leave that in. Do not cut that. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going with Green Bay. Browns and Titans. I bet they shut them out almost. Yeah? Green Bay? They played the other day. Green Bay sh shut out the Vikings? They almost did. Vikings got like, They got torched. Dang, Wasn't so I should like have took like these that? to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> We're close to Tahoe. So, Browns and Titans, you know the whole state flower thing, like California state flower is a poppy, the California poppy? Do you know some states have two state flowers? Uh uh I don't know that either until I did my football research. <laughs> uh, there's the state flower and then the state wildflower. Oh, uh, okay. So, Ohio and Tennessee both have state flowers and state wildflowers. Nothing's a coincidence when it comes to these. <laughs> Not in cool pics. <laughs> So, the Ohio state flower is a scarlet carnation, and the wildflower is a large white trillium. When I found this out, I gave Ohio a slight edge because of ScarJo. <laughs> Not because of Scarlet from the Gone with the Wind movie. But then I checked Tennessee's flowers. What's my favorite color? Purple. They have the iris and the purple passion flower. <laughs> the purple passion flower is known to help insomnia if it's dried up and used for tea. So I'm going to Tennessee. Sound logic. Oh man, this one's long. <clears throat> Chiefs and the Niners. Oh man. We're going mascots here. <laughs> Do you guys know who the mascot of Kansas City is? Some Indian. Their mascot is a wolf. <laughs> but when you look at it, it's catered to kids. It looks like a retarded version of Wild E. Coyote. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. You could cut that out. It looks like Wild E. Coyote's Down Syndrome cousin. <laughs> <laughs> if I was given the opportunity, I'd take over the team and make my own mascot. And we'd move to Alaska. We would build our stadium in Willow, Alaska. The Willow Abominations is what we would be called. <laughs> Every game would be a home game. I'd build the stadium out of ice, and the seat <laughs> and concession stand would be only one tier. No upper balconies. I would have a throne carved from obsidian sit right at the end of the field, right behind the goalpost. <laughs> and my mascots, mascots, plural, would be beside me, one to my left and one to my right. Think of the most ferocious feline you can. What would it, what would come to mind? A lion or a tiger, or an ocelot. A jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> How intimidating would it be to see me with two saber-toothed tigers? <laughs> <laughs> and while I sat on the throne, I'd be naked too. I wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the one on my left would be called Dire, and the one on my right would be called Straight. That's hella tight. <laughs> <laughs> my team's anthem would be Demonoid Phenomenon by Rob Zombie. <laughs> and when they heard the, those first opening guitar chords, they start frothing at the mouth. <laughs> my victory song would be Bad Romance by Lady Gaga, except when we were playing against the Redskins or Chiefs. You know what would it be then? 
run to the hills. <laughs> <laughs> Last one, Cardinals and Broncos. Did you pick a victor? I thought was, you were talking about the 49ers and the Chiefs, weren't you? I win. No, yeah, the winning was <laughs> the, okay. the Willow Abomination. <laughs> you win. Okay. I don't know if Tahoe's going to accept that bet. I'd go with Niners if I had to pick. <laughs> uh, Cardinals and Broncos. On this one, I reached out to my secret correspondent. Nice. It's a new one, though, because I was having a tough time. I asked him, and he blew my mind with the response to my question. I said... Uh, who do you think will win, the Cardinals or the Broncos? You know what he asked me? He texts back, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> where are they playing? I was seriously floored. I was like, he's really thinking about this. Like, he's really ch- trying to take psychology of the stadiums into play. Like, more analytics than I do in my job here. He's like <laughs> tenfold above me. So I told him they were playing in Denver. And uh, did you guess or did you look it up? No, I had to look it up. Oh. I had to do research. <laughs> and he said there's a skit in where uh, one of the Manning brothers who's on the Broncos was throwing footballs at little kids. So I'm going with Denver. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have a jerk of the week? I do. Who's your jerk of the week? My jerk of the week making his second appearance. Is myself. <laughs> I was <clears throat> I was at the store minding my own business. When I ride my bike to the store, I like to have my headphones in with my music. So I was walking around and I'm looking at some type of meat to cook for dinner. And then out of the corner of my eye, I see this old man and old lady. And all of a sudden, the old lady just collapses right on the floor. Did you laugh? No, I didn't laugh. I just like looked, like kind of looked. And then he looked at me like, help. Yeah. And I just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've never seen anyone faint like that. Just, she fell onto the boxes and onto like the salad dressing. And I was, <laughs> and then I saw other people coming. So I was like, I didn't feel as bad. <laughs> I have a jerk of the week. I'm going to go before Brad because I think Brad's going to be epic. Ah. <sighs> So South Park, <clears throat> they released an episode this week in which they joked about how gluten and how, about gluten and how it would make your penis fly off, among other things. Most notably, d- instant death. It would fly off. Wow! Like it, it has like rocket propul- propulsion. Oh man! <laughs> they jokingly compared the consumption of gluten to being infected with the Ebola virus. I went to lunch with some coworkers earlier this week, and I noticed on the menu, menu that there was a. GF symbol next to a few of the items. Uh-huh. I was going to share the humor that I had ascertained earlier in the week from watching South Park and trash on these yuppie dietary fads. Before I had a chance, a co-worker said, and for some reason they sounded like Matt, I don't know, <laughs> uh, gluten-free pizza. I haven't had pizza in so long because it contains gluten. Instantly, I, I had a solemn face. <laughs> <laughs> then the whole table jumped in. Yeah, I feel so much better since I cut gluten from my diet. Or, ooh, there's this place in Midtown that serves gluten-free donuts that taste better than any donut I've ever had. Bullshit. What the fuck is gluten? Like, what is it? I still don't know. It's something, oh, yeah. some sort of protein that's in flour or something like because that. Because I read uh, something online that said that the whole gluten thing is disproven. Like, scientists have disproven it and people are just doing it just to be lame. That's why these people are my jerks of the week. I hate these new diet fads. If you really care about your health or your appearance, just don't eat as much bad food. <laughs> Humans live longer now than they ever have throughout history. A little gluten, whatever the fuck that is, <laughs> will not hurt you. That's my jerk of the week, you fucking dietary fad pieces of shit. <laughs> Alright, I'm taking this one to the heart again. When people fuck with my friends, especially when you're in my close circle of friends like Nick and Maddie G and Brian and Eddie now. Oh yeah. <laughs> I get fucking pissed off. And this one fuck named Robbie Robbins <laughs> has taken it to a whole new level. So I've got to take my jerk of the week to a whole new level. Yes. He was blowing up Nick's Facebook page with all kinds of bullshit. <laughs> His opinions of people wearing different teams apparel and the way you're supposed to root for certain teams, certain sports teams, are fucking pointless. 
Last night, I wore, or when I wrote this, that night I wore a Giants hat, an A's jersey, Dodgers socks, and Yankees shoes. And I didn't give a fuck of what he thought. <laughs> Did I take it into consideration? No, hell no. If people want to jump on bandwagons and root for different teams, what are they hurting you? Who gives a fuck? So, Robbie Robbins, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking that you're the almighty ruler of all of all sports sounds like you've been listening to a too much raw barney and don the lamest fucking radio show on 98 rock they also try to make rules on what teams you should root for and who you can and cannot root for because of all this robbie robbins i'm gonna cut a promo on you yes in the vein of brock lesnar <laughs> Uh, Robbie Robbins, is it? <laughs> I don't know if your dad sat at the edge of your bed when you were a little boy and fed your ear with full of all kinds of garbage. <laughs> he said, little Robbie, someday you're going to grow up and become a man. You could be anything you want. But little did he know he was wrong. Only morons give their child the same first name as their last name. <laughs> William Williamson, Donald Donaldson, Robbie Robbins. What kind of man does that to his kids? What kind of men do they become? What do they amount to? Spoiler alert, nothing. <laughs> you have amounted to nothing except being a Facebook troll. The only thing you think you're good at? Facebook banner. And that's all it is. It's just banter. It's just your own stupid opinion. You didn't move anyone with your sports bashing and your statistics. You didn't hurt anyone or harm anyone or get anyone behind you with your stupid opinion. I don't know if you're married or not or in a relationship. But if you are, I feel sorry for her. <laughs> She probably sits on the bed at night and cries because she is with such a loser. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> and just to think, I have to waste my time with your ass next Sunday in Hell in the Cell. It's disgusting. At least I'll be doing your girlfriend a favor by eradicating your ass. Yes. Fuck you, Robbie Robbins. <laughs> oh, man. Broke, broke a little bit of kayfabe there. Fuck yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Walt Flanagan's one true three. What I'm going to do is give you guys three different scenarios. Two of them are a lie, but one, one is real. So you guys are going to have to guess what one is real. You guys could ask questions once I reveal the three things. And here's the first one. Everyone knows that I lost my virginity at 26. Or was it? I actually lost it at 22. Oh, man. While working at... This is number two. While working at Domino's, more than 10 years ago, I was involved in an Armenian crime syndicate that made me thousands of dollars. And my third one. When I was 20 and still living with my mom, I walked into her having sex. I'm going to say the sex thing because I walked in with her having sex too. I would agree what? with that. With who? Ew. Richard Chavez. Oh, but this is an adult. This yeah, is this is when I was like seven. It was probably when you were conceived. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you were alive when we lived in that house. Never mind. She was still alive? What the fuck? There, I think she was just doing like one night stands when he'd come over drunk. <laughs> oh, <come> on, <laughs> I don't even hear this shit. <laughs> 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 Does anyone have any questions on my three? Uh, oh, so we're supposed to, like, try to break you, kind of, huh? Yeah. Um, how did you make those thousands of dollars? Stealing. <laughs> what were you stealing? Money. <laughs> <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite a scam. <laughs> and, and who stole your virginity at 22? A lady of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Where? In a hotel. Like what city? Sacramento. Um, was it at night, considering that it was a lady of the night? Yeah. Yeah. Did you pay for the hotel? 
No, I did not. Did you raw dog it or did you put on a Jimmy hat? I want to say I put on a Jimmy hat. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say. <laughs> she said that she was uh, had the IUD. And disease free. She didn't look messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and who was your mom banging? <sighs> One of my uncle's friends. <laughs> His name was Junior. <laughs> Fuck, Junior. <laughs> he uh, he isn't lived... he like ten years younger than us? Uh, no, oh, no, still. his dad. His yeah, dad. Junior's dad. Gross. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he um, and he was married to this heck of big Samoan wife, and he was real skinny. So I don't think, he... and he lived right next door to us. <laughs> what We're... position were they in? Oh, sick. <laughs> <laughs> she was on top. <laughs> Reverse? No. <laughs> you know, I picture where, things when they're mentioned. All right. This was it? Not where was it? Thing. Like, were, were they in her house? Or yeah, what? it was in the last house I lived in with him, <laughs> with her uh, right to the right of the guard shack. Now, the only reason I ask this is because I know how her lower back is. And this will tell me if this is true or not. Was she on him like up, or was she like on the bed like this? <laughs> I just, I just remember seeing a blur of white on brown. And did you and, see those titties? No, she was, she was, she was on the love seat because her love seat was against the wall. So she so saw was, that ass. Yeah. <laughs> I'm changing my answer now to the syndicate. <laughs> <laughs> thousands of dollars, though. Yep. I think we heard we would have heard about thousands of dollars. Not if he's keeping it low profile. <laughs> now it's past the uh, statute of limitations or whatever it's called. It's so, been so long, you can't be punished for it. So, uh, what say you? I still say your mom. What about you, Matt? God, I hope not the mom thing. Um, I'm gonna go with the virginity. Hooker, yes. Brian, what do you say? Brad, say syndicate. Mm -hmm. Maddie? Because we're going for what's Hooker. true, right? Yeah. Hooker? Yeah, yeah. What are you, Eddie? We'll say what's true? Yeah. Hooker. Hooker? I was part of an Armenian crime syndicate that? That, <laughs> that moved, that made me thousands of dollars. Who was Armenian? Like, at work? Like... On the Mather Field one. On the Rancho office. Oh. All of them were Armenians. Oh, I forgot you had two. That's how we got all those Dragon Ball cards. I spent all the money on Dragon Ball cards and dimple trips. What I did was, uh, I was pulled in. It was like there were the two main guys, uh, Manuk and Rafi, they were like the head of it. And they said, uh, you want to make extra money? I said, sure. <laughs> so what we would do is, uh, we would take order cause I worked the night shift. We would take orders after nine o'clock and only enter one to the system and then write down the orders on a piece of paper. And then collect the money from deliveries and we'd split it. Whichever driver took the money, they split it with me. So over three months, I made like 4000 bucks. Should have put in savings. I should have, but I was stupid and it was in my dark years, so. It shouldn't have taken three months. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be careful. Because uh, um, the owner was like, where's all this food going? Dude, and I what are you doing? And I blame it on Barris coming in and taking food to his friends. So it was like you'd do like one out of every three deliveries or whatever? Uh, it was more like seven out of every ten. I'd do them more than not. And, oh, wow. and Walt was selling the business, so I really didn't care. He didn't really care mm -hmm. near, near the end. <clears throat> so I remember one night, we usually made about four or five thousand a night for the company. The last night he was going to sell it, he made $426 and we made the rest. <laughs> Damn. I knew there was something was up because you're like going to Dimple every fucking day and buying shit and the Dragon Ball cards. It's like, he bought another box? Where is he getting this money from? Yeah. And uh, come to find out, I had like $1,700 sitting on my dresser when I lived with Steven and them. 300 of it came up missing and it was Marissa, but she blamed it on her friend Lisa. So I was like, Fucking oh, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys want to play a game? Yeah. So... Uh, this first game is pretty short. I went ahead and took some wacky laws. I'm going to call it wacky laws. 
and one of them is not true, the other one is. You have to guess which one is not true. There's four laws. Three of them are true, but one is not. Number one, a law survives from the English colony of New Haven, now Connecticut. 16-year-old boys may be put to death for disobeying, striking, or cursing his parents. Other rebellious behaviors apply as well. Number two, dog catchers in Denver, Colorado must notify dogs three days in advance of catching them. He or she must do this by posting signs where the dog usually visits. How are dogs supposed to read, though? Number three, a car door may not be opened for longer than necessary in Oregon. And then the fourth, in Toledo, Ohio, it is illegal to smell any horned animal's breath that lives on a farm. <laughs> so two of them are true? Three are true. Three are true, so Three. only one is false? And you have to guess the false one. Oh, wow. I'll say the death to the babies, or death to the kids. <laughs> I'm going to say the dog one. Was it in Colorado or something like that? So, death to 16-year-old boys, dog catchers in Denver must be notified, a car door may not be opened for longer than necessary in Oregon, or illegal animal breast smelling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> animal breast smelling. Anyone else have a guess? Maddie? The breath. Animal? Yeah. What about you, Eddie? Car door. Yeah. The one that's not true? In Toledo, Ohio, it is illegal to smell any horned animal's breath that lives on a farm. The other three are completely true. <laughs> so you can kill your kids and get away with it? In Connecticut, if a 16-year-old boy assaults her parent, they could kill him. All right, final game for you guys. Box art trivia. What I did was went to the stupidest looking person at my work <laughs> and took I photoshopped Nintendo box art uh, and took out the name, so she had to describe the game boxes, and you guys have to guess based oh, on that's her cool. description. Okay. <laughs> Who did you approach at work? The, the stupidest the, looking person? The stupidest looking female <laughs> above the age of 40. <laughs> Number one. Oh, it's an angel or some form of winged creature behind a bush. It has a fart cloud under it. Is that an angel? What a fucking moron. That's obviously Kid Icarus. That is right. <laughs> Number two. Oh, that's Mega Man. He's shooting a spiny alien. A sp Mega Man 3. Mega Man 3. Anyone else? A spiny alien. I had Mega, I th uh, the original Mega, Mega Man. I think it's Mega Man 3. Eddie got it. Metroid. It's Metroid. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It's yeah. obviously Mega Man. Oh, yeah. Good one, Eddie. That was a, yeah, that is a little spiny thing yeah. on there. Yep, yep. Oh, that's cute. There's a boy in his little flying bed being attacked by flying alligators yeah. and a horror tree. Yes, little, little Nemo. Nemo. Uh, I'm guessing that's a polar bear wearing red bicycle shorts. And that's an Eskimo trying to club it to, get to death with a mallet. Ice climber. Ice climbers. Yep. Uh, two brothers are being attacked by a swarm of ninjas and a helicopter. There's one ninja holding a star and one holding a chain. Yeah. Bad dudes. Bad dudes. Oh, is this Mega Man? Yeah, this is Mega Man, isn't it? But why is it all gray and he's in space? Mega Man in space? Was that one part two or is this a sequel? <laughs> gray and in space? <sighs> Mega Man 1? Silver Surfer. Oh my, <laughs> oh, my brother used to watch this movie. There are a bunch of midgets running around. I couldn't watch it because they scared me. Then I asked her, do they still scare you? She said, yes. <laughs> Willow? Uh, Willow, yeah. It, it, that was a good one. Uh, it looks like a blue ball of dust stole this... Scary looking ogre's key. I played this game. I think. What's it called again? <laughs> Solomon's key? No. The Adventures of Lolo. Huh. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, let me see. There's two cute dinosaurs sitting on an orb with toys flying all around him. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Bubble Bobble. <laughs> Ew, that's gross. There's a freaky claw man on the cover with blue hair. <laughs> Why is it gross? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wolverine. Ugh. Why is it gross? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Claw man. That was it. That was all I had. You should have showed her a Mega Man one. <laughs> I didn't know she was going to think two other things were Mega Man. Super <laughs> Super. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that'll do it for episode 67 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Nick. Happy hunting.